G'day everyone. You know, I do like to wear a good diver watch every so often, but at the moment my inventory, while very colourful, was wanting for something with a more classic, restrained look. I really fancy a Rolex Submariner, but then I remembered I still have bills to pay and still almost $9,000 short for this pre-loved offering. But thankfully AliExpress had my back and offered me something very similar, but within an everyman's budget. So let's plow ahead and review the Steel Dive SD 1953, and from here on let's call it the SD. So here are the specs, including the case diameter and other measurements, weight, water resistance, movement, and price. So let's start with the most obvious pro, and no surprises, it's the bang for buck factor. Prices can fluctuate a bit on AliExpress, but you shouldn't really have to pay more than about 130 Australian dollars for the SD. But for that money, you're getting a diver's watch with 300 meters of water resistance, a Seiko automatic movement, sapphire crystal, loom ceramic bezel, sign crown, and it comes on a bracelet. You'll be hard pressed to find many competitors that can offer all this at this price point. The case itself feels very solid, with polished sides and a slightly duller, more brushed look on top of the lugs. The contrast between them isn't really noticeable, so overall it all appears pretty sturdy and uniform. At the 3 o'clock you've got a signed screw down crown with small metal guards surrounding it. The nice part is that they feel protective, but they give the crown just enough room so you can easily grip and manipulate it without their interference. Looking at the dial, and if you've seen a Rolex Submariner before this video, or any of the dozens of similar looking Submariner homages on the market, then this will be a case of deja vu. You have a blank steel chapter ring running around the edge, and moving in you have the oh so familiar circular indices at every hour, with the exception of the 6 to 9 positions using rectangles, the 12 using a triangle, and the 3 o'clock represented by a date complication. Just above them in tiny print is a minute track, and scanning towards the middle is the Steel Dive logo just under that 12 o'clock triangle, and the automatic and 300M text just above that 6 o'clock indice. Pointing out the time at these Mercedes hands, and ticking along is the seconds hand with a loomed lollipop weight at the pointer end. Some watch enthusiasts may look at this and feel a bit bored. It's a homage watch, and it's a design that's being copied from the original Rolex more times than I've eaten hot dinners. But if that sort of thing doesn't bother you, or if, like me, you haven't owned this exact type of watch before, then this is where that bang for buck factor keeps shining. Not only does it have that timeless design that's recognisable by nearly everybody, but the dial makes this watch look a lot more expensive than what it is thanks mostly in part to those shiny applied indices and the absence of nearly any imperfections, even when viewed up close. Even brand name watches can't always make that boast. The print on the dial is simple but sensible, well proportioned and to the point, giving the dark colour of that dial even greater presence. That sensibility also extends to the hands, where they're just large enough to offer good legibility and don't look bulbous or cumbersome. The date complication also has a Cyclops magnifier positioned above it to make date reading an easier task, especially for those of poorer vision. Adorning the screw down case back is a steel dive logo, with the brand name and specifications running around it. If I were to say something nice about that logo, it's that it looks unique and keeps true to its diver's theme. Personally, I'm not a huge fan, but I appreciate it's still there. The BGW9 loom on this thing is surprisingly good, and the fact it's splashed on the hands, indices, and bezel really give it a commanding look in the dark. I ran it up against my Seiko to see how it would fare against a hard header, and although it becomes obvious after 20 minutes that the Seiko reigns supreme, it still has faint visibility even after an hour. I'd say I'm still pretty impressed by that. And seeing as I've mentioned Seiko, I'll delve into the mixed feelings about the SD. 300 meters of water resistance is excellent, but to be honest, I'd take that recommendation with a chunk of salt. I mean, certainly you can swim with this and get it as wet as you want, but there's no certification for its advertised water resistance, and in a pressure test, I'd put my money on the Seiko any day. A Cyclops feature on a watch dial can be very divisive, and while I do appreciate the viewing ease and convenience it offers, I have found myself having to adjust my wrist on slight angles to get the Cyclops lined up with the date to view it correctly. I'm not sure if it's just me or if there is an alignment issue with the Cyclops, albeit a small one, but it's something I find to be quirky at best and a slight annoyance at worst. The biggest mixed bag I have with the SD is its supplied bracelet. Overall it's more good than bad, as it includes a signed milled clasp with 6 micro adjustments in push button release, and it's surprisingly quite comfortable on the wrist but it is quite weighty and you will notice its presence while wearing it. And there is quite a fair bit of play and flex in the bracelet, so I'm unsure how well it will fare with long-term wear. But with a 20mm lug width and a safe look, you can swap the bracelet for almost any kind of strap, so there's tons of choice out there. And this is where I move into the negatives. And while I did say the watch looks more expensive than it is, 
the quality is still lacking in some areas. The bezel looks great and its loom is equally impressive, but I swear it has a mind of its own. Out of the box it was extremely stiff and required almost Herculean finger strength to move it, and then after a day it suddenly went very loose and was probably a little too easy to turn. Nowadays it shifted back towards tighter resistance, but is a lot easier to turn than before. But even so, the notching around the bezel has a rough, almost jagged feel to it. So if you do end up with a tight bezel, unless you've got a lot of calluses on your fingers, turning it will be an uncomfortable experience. This stiffness and turning difficulty also extends to the screw down crown. It's easy enough to get your fingers around, but there's a bit of a grating feeling when you're unscrewing or rescrewing it. And while you can feel the notching around the crown, it somehow feels difficult to grip, so the turning process overall feels like a longer job, and pulling the crown to adjust the time or date complication takes more effort. And if you're adjusting the date, it requires an added level of concentration so that you don't pull too hard and skip straight to the time adjustment. And to top it off, re-threading that crown sometimes requires me to have one or two goes to set it correctly to screw it in properly. But on the plus side, at least turning the crown to change dates and times is pretty easy, and the hands won't jump once you push the crown in. If this was a quartz watch, you could just tolerate this, but on an automatic that gets worn in rotation, it gets pretty tedious. And as a small nitpick, the Steel Live logo on the doll has a bit too much presence and could afford to be a bit smaller. But then again, that could be also the fact I'm not a huge fan of it. But I said it before and I'll say it again, you're getting a heck of a lot of watch for the price. The case and dial fit and finish is absolutely incredible at this price point, and the inclusion of a half-decent bracelet and generous loom on the dial and bezel just makes it so much sweeter. It's not the most perfect or most original watch, but if you can look past the homage factor, then the SD is an easy recommendation to make. To a point where I can confidently say it is one of the best watches you can buy on AliExpress. If you own or have owned a Steel Dive 1953, I'd like to hear your thoughts about it. But that's it for now, and thanks for watching, eh?